Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be talking about swans, or mute swans as they are correctly called, a symbol of love and fairy tales. Please remember to like and subscribe. Alright, fact 1, a single species. A very interesting part about the swans that we're looking at is that they are a single species. There are no subspecies of swans, meaning that there's no other variations in terms of their size or outer appearance, feather size, feet size, bill size, and so forth. They're all one single species. It's rather unique. And you may be asking yourself, what about black swans? Well, black swan is actually a totally separate species from the mute swans, which are typically white. And so I think it's incredibly interesting that this animal is a single species animal with no variations. When that happens, generally, all the animals of this type will look very, very similar. There's not going to be too many variations in terms of their appearance or behavior. And so you can think of the mu swans or regular white swans as a single huge body of species that is completely uniform and monotonistic. All right, let's get into the next fact. Fact two, generally monogamous. As I mentioned in the introduction, these swans are a symbol of love. And the reason is that typically these swans mate for life, meaning that they do not change their mating partners varying breeding season by breeding season. They typically choose one mating partner and remain with that partner for the rest of their lives. However, as I mentioned, this is actually only a general case. There are events where, for example, one of the partners dies. Generally, when that happens, the swan doesn't just stay single or widowed forever. No, the swan will eventually find another partner. And what's very interesting is that the partner will usually take over the previous territory of the diseased swan. So for example, if a female swan's male partner dies, she'll typically find a younger swan which will move in and join her territory, and vice versa. If a male swan's spouse or the female swan dies, he'll pick up a younger female swan and then she'll move in to his territory. And so swans have still a logical reasoning that if their partner dies, they need to pick up another partner to survive. Alright, fact 3, invasive. Another interesting part about these swans is that they're actually invasive species where they are introduced. These swans natively originated from Eurasia, parts of Europe, North Africa, and the Russian Federation. However, because of their appearance and docile nature, and also their symbol of love and fairy tales, they have been introduced worldwide. And when these animals are introduced into a, a different habitat that they're not a native of, and because they have a ferocious appetite, eating up to 8 pounds of food a day, they can quickly destroy a new habitat that have never seen this animal before. And that is what's happening in North America. Despite an attempt to control them, these animals have become wild and established their own stable populations and continues to reproduce and destroy the habitats they're in, and thereby making them legal to be killed. Alright, let's get into the next fact. Fact 4. Aggressive and attacks humans. Despite their docile appearance, their symbol of being love and fairy tales and gentle nature, these animals are actually very aggressive to protect their nests. When you approach a swan nest with cygnets or little swans as, as they called, the parent swans will actually be very aggressive and attack humans. In an effort to try to protect their own young, these swans will attack anything that comes close. Not just the animals, but human beings as well. And so don't let their gentle appearance fool you. If you see them having their young swans next to them, do not approach because they will attack. And these swans, despite their 
look outward appearance and seemingly friendly nature can attack ferociously with their beaks. And so it is important to avoid them if they have a nest, eggs, or younglings around them. They can also be quite territorial. So really, it's best to avoid them and really only approach if you intend on killing them. All right, let's get into the next and final fact. Ancient creatures. As I mentioned in the first section, swans are a single species. There are no subspecies, no variants, and they have existed this way for thousands and thousands of years. There are writings dating thousands of years ago where these animals are depicted in their drawings or writings. Since ancient times and ancient civilizations, these swans have already established their symbolism and their interactions with humans made them what it is today. And so when we see a swan, it immediately conjures up all the symbolisms and concepts that they stand for. Because all the stories about swans and how they're portrayed has been ingrained into the human society and human civilization for thousands of years. So it is rather difficult to view these as ferocious animals, as I mentioned in the previous section, that they could be aggressive in attacking people. So keep that in mind, because the humans have been programmed for thousands of years to treat these animals as some kind of majestic animal that is a symbol of love. But in reality, it's only because they've been existing with humans for so long and have really enjoyed a protected status as a high regarded animal. However, just like other animals, they have become invasive in North America as well. All right, that's it for my video today. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.